Hello, I'm Brian Gronholm with Team Turboprop. Today we'll go over the general operating theory of the King Air's CAPS-2 digital pressurization controller and what you can expect to see on your cabin display screens during your flight. The new CAPS-2 digital pressurization control system reduces pilot workload. It does this because the control system obtains destination altitude directly from the flight management system of the ProLine Fusion avionics suite. Armed with that information, independent outside and cabin pressure sensors, and a few additional discrete inputs such as weight on wheels, it will calculate and control pressurization throughout the flight. To best describe the expected indications during these flight phases, let's first look at the limits within which the controller operates. Here we have a chart depicting aircraft altitude versus cabin altitude. Cabin altitude is across the bottom here, aircraft altitude runs up the side. The shorter chart below will also be used to plot the aircraft and cabin altitudes as a function of time for our example flights. Let's add the limitations for the controller to the top chart. First, we have a bottom limit of delta P, zero. There is a separate mechanical valve on the aft pressure bulkhead that mechanically will open in the event the cabin delta P becomes negative or below this line. Second, we have the upper limit of either 6.5 or 7 delta P, depending on your airframe options. This limit is maintained by the mechanical max delta P safety limiters built into both outflow valves. Either valve's limiter can trigger this safety function. Just to help with depictions later, let's go ahead and fill in the delta P curves in between here at one PSI between each of those lines. Most importantly here, we have the controller's scheduled delta P limit. This line is the delta P limit that the software in the controller will target for a given altitude during operation. The line shown here is a representation of the standard airplane's schedule. The schedule is not a single delta P value for all aircraft altitudes. By varying this delta P limit with altitude, we can achieve a balance of passenger comfort and performance across a wider flight regime. Airplanes equipped with the alternate pressurization option, common for air ambulance operations, will be able to toggle between that variable delta P schedule and a fixed single delta P value schedule shown here at the top of the chart. Additionally, there are limits for maximum commanded aircraft altitude here at the far end of the chart where the red indicates the cabin altitude high warning message. If the departure or destination airport is above this limit, then the controller might enter a high altitude mode. More on that later. The controller considers these limits and the five phases of the flight, takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, and landing, to calculate the cabin pressure. Let's consider an example flight profile to see what the expected indications will be for a crew in flight. Our example flight here is departing from 2,000 feet and headed to a destination altitude at 4,000 feet. Let's assume that they are far enough apart for a nearly two hour and 20 minute flight at a selected cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. During the takeoff roll, the system will typically allow for some pre-pressurization to utilize the inrush of air from the engines being increased to take off power. This is typically so short and such a small bump that it typically goes unnoticed, but it shouldn't exceed 400 feet below field elevation at a rate of approximately no more than 600 feet a minute. Climb is the most complex portion of the controller's scheduling. While the airplane altitude is still below the scheduled delta P limit, the cabin will climb or descend at a rate target of approximately 100 feet per minute towards the destination altitude. We're feeling pretty sporty here today in our example, and so the aircraft itself is climbing at about 1,700 feet per minute for this first six minutes of the climb. As you can see, after those first six minutes, we hit the scheduled delta P. At this point, the system will now work to maintain the cabin delta P at the scheduled limit for the remainder of the aircraft's climb, all the way up to our cruising altitude in the upper right-hand corner of your chart. We've also slowed our climb rate to a more sedate 1,000 feet a minute for the remainder of this climb. So as the aircraft is climbing, it is constantly updating the maximum altitude as top of climb. Once we begin our descent, it will use this top of climb and our destination elevation plus 1,500 feet to calculate a descent line uh, between these two target points. So now that we're here at cruising altitude, we'll take a moment to look at our lower chart as well. You'll notice you can see here that your expected cabin indications for delta P are finally approaching what would be about that 6.7 delta P after our long cruise. So now we begin our descent. The system during descent will control the cabin, aiming for this line at a descent rate of between 500 and 600 feet a minute. 
The goal for the controller is to bring the cabin to field elevation at a point 1,500 feet above the field. This is so that upon touchdown, the cabin should already be at zero delta P. If the descent rate is stepped, as is shown here at 25,000 feet in our example, you'll note that in the bottom chart you can see the step and the descent, the controller will then hold the cabin at the delta P it that calculated from the descent line. It won't attempt to re-increase back to the upper limit of the delta P. Finally, at the end of our flight, we touch down. The cabin should have reached zero delta P. If not, that previously mentioned weight on wheel switch will trigger the controller and it'll fully open the valves and relieve any remaining pressure. So now that we've looked at a basic flight, let's look at a couple of odd case flight profiles. Here's a shorter flight between our 2,000 and 4,000 foot airports. They're closer together now, so we're only gonna climb to 8,000 feet. As you can see, the aircraft will actually only reach a maximum delta P of 2.5 PSI at the start of cruise. By the time you've started your descent into the destination airport, this cabin delta P has actually reached only 1.8 PSI and will then drop to zero on landing. And here is what the return leg for that short hop looks like. Initially, our climb out added 1.9 delta P to the cabin, but during cruise, the controller has been working to slowly bring the cabin to field elevation at that 100 feet a minute. And so we reach a maximum of 2.7 delta P before we begin our descent. Earlier, I mentioned a high altitude mode. When operating from airports 9,300 feet or higher, the controller enters that mode. During this operation, the system will be working to reduce the cabin altitude back to the 9,300 foot a minute uh, during climb through 24,000 feet. And during descent, if necessary, the high altitude mode will then climb the cabin to match the actual field elevation. Additionally, during high altitude mode, the cabin altitude high CAS message is now delayed to 14,800 feet. As you can see, the new digital pressurization control system in your King Air is performing a lot of calculations and work behind the scenes in order to reduce your pilot workload. With this automation comes some changes in operating methods and accordingly differences in what cabin altitude and cabin delta P can be expected to be seen during flight. If you have any questions about what I've presented today or need assistance operating, troubleshooting, or maintaining your King Air's digital pressurization control system, please reach out to us on Team Turboprop. Also, if you have any suggestions for future content you'd like to see us cover in a short presentation like this, please shoot us an email and we'll be happy to add it for consideration.